Okay, y'all, I am so, so excited for this next session. We have two folks uh, speaking in this talk that we're about to have. We are gonna have Mandy Whaley and Arjun, and they are going to uh, be talking to us today all about end-to-end -end testing with Playwright. Now, Mandy recently joined Microsoft. She loves building tools that help developers, and she learned how to knit during the pandemic and now has access to a lot of hand knitted hats. So hit her up if your noggin's feeling cold. And Arjun is a program manager on the Playwright team where he works closely with Playwright users and get their feedback and shape the product roadmap. Um, fun fact, he's been using Playwright Automate for boring workflows online like booking appointments with the DMV. Okay, I need, I'm going there Friday. I need this code, hit me up. <laughs> and, I'm so excited to hear this talk. Uh, what are you going to be talking to us about today, y'all? Yeah, thanks, Chloe. We're excited to be here. We're going to be talking about Playwright and how Playwright works really well with static web apps. All right. Are we ready to dive into it or more questions first? Let's go for it. We'll take all the questions. Um, if you have any questions for Mandy and Arjun during this talk, put them in the chat and we will make sure to answer them afterwards. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And that text stretch was amazing. I'm still okay. like kind of doing some of those, I think. Um, so great to be here. I'm Mandy Whaley. I'm a product leader in our developer Azure developer experience group. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk with you about Playwright. Playwright's an open source project we've been working on for automated web UI testing. And I'm even more excited to be here to talk about how Playwright and static web apps work together. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about automated end-to-end -end testing and why this kind of testing is so valuable right now. Teams are faced with the pressure to ship faster and they need to do it with high confidence. And sometimes testing can be a bottleneck in this process. There's also a need to take really important user journeys and key scenarios and turn those into code. If you think about something like a shopping cart, select an item, put it in a cart, check out, this is a flow that you never want to have an issue with, that you always want to work. And if you can capture that, replicate it in code, automate the test and test with every release, with every PR, then you know you are not breaking that as you release and you can release with confidence. The other thing driving automated testing right now is the breadth of browsers and devices and screen sizes and mobile and the need to be able to make sure that your application is giving the right experience across all of those. But historically, automated testing has been hard. It's been hard to get started. It's been hard to get it right, to write the, the right test that you need. It's been hard to maintain, and it can be hard to reprodu reproduce the failed test, which makes it hard to take action on the test results. And this is what we've been working with in Playwright to really improve. Our goal is to build a solid foundation and tooling for easy to use and reliable automated testing. So what is Playwright? Playwright's an open source library for web developers and testers to write end-to-end -end tests that run on all modern web browsers. We're open source. Find us on GitHub. Come and interact with the team. We love it when people bring feature requests, bug reports. It's also a great place to check on releases and release notes and know what's coming up with Playwright. Playwright is made for developers. We have consistent APIs across JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Java, and C Sharp. So you can write your test in your favorite language. And we also work really hard on inner loop tools for developers so that the act of writing the test is easy and delightful. And Playwright works across all the modern web browsers, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari. And it's really interesting to think that Playwright WebKit works on all operating systems. So you can do things like run Safari test in your Linux-based CI-CD pipeline. Now, the three core ideas behind Playwright are capable, reliable, and easy. Capable automation for modern web platforms. Modern web platforms are changing rapidly and evolving. There's new frameworks, there's new browser features, and the Playwright community and team are really keeping pace with this and making sure that Playwright works with everything you want to develop with. Works great with single page applications, with React, with Vue, um, even embraces new browser features like geolocation so you can test across a really wide set of scenarios. And then reliable. This is where sometimes the flakiness of tests and the hard to reproduce becomes a barrier. And we're working on this by creating a bi-directional communication between the test script and the browser. And what this does is it lets Playwright listen to events from the browser, 
to know about the state of the underlying page in a very precise manner. And this lets us do things like have auto wait on all of our APIs. So you don't have to build in uh, timeouts and things like that. It lets your test run in a very reproducible and reliable way and easy, easy to get started, easy to maintain, and easy to actually author and build the test is the goal of what we're driving for. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to welcome my friend Arjun, who's also a product leader in our Playwright group. And he's going to take you through a demo we've been building that shows you how to get started with Playwright and how to use Playwright with static web apps. Arjun? Thanks, Mandy. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, you know, I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you a demo of how Playwright can work on a static web app. Um, just want to make sure my screen is up there, uh, and there it is. So we are going to go through three broad steps in this particular demo. We'll start with you know setting up Playwright with NPM. We'll author a test inside Visual Studio Code, and then we'll actually deploy that test on GitHub Actions uh, as a part of our CI/CD workflow. So let's jump right in. So I have here in front of me a React application, a to-do application built in React, um, and I've deployed this on static web apps. Uh, I can use the VS Code extension for static web apps to actually browse to this website. Uh, you can see that it's a, it's a basic to-do app here, and we're gonna use this for you know, our demo. Uh, let me jump right in back into our editor and show you how we can set up Playwright. So Playwright um, in, is an NPM dependency that you can add to your package.json file. Uh, in this particular example, I've, I've configured you know, our latest stable build of Playwright test, which comes with Playwright and the test runner together. Uh, and I've added that as a developer dependency uh, because this is something that we only need in our dev environment and, and not in production. And you can also install this with NPM in your application. Uh, once I have this, this installation completed, I can actually launch the Playwright CLI uh, in my in integrated terminal inside, inside VS Code. So the Playwright CLI, you know, which I launched with NPX Playwright, comes with a bunch of commands that can help you get started with Playwright. Um, the first command that I want to highlight is uh, the install command. Um, so what the install command does is that it actually ensures that your system has the three browser engines installed that are required for Playwright. Uh, you know, these browsers are Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Um, I already have them installed, and so this, this quick, uh, ran pretty quickly for me. Now let's get into uh, uh, starting our, our test creation uh, now that we have set up Playwright and the underlying browsers. I'm going to use another command from the Playwright CLI. It's called CodeGen, uh, which will be a way for us to generate Playwright code uh, uh, from user actions. I'm going to launch the code gen tool, uh, which brings up these two windows in front of me. Um, the window on the left is an empty browser window, uh, and the window on the right is uh, the Playwright code gen tool. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. So the Playwright code gen tool generates code uh, so that you can actually get started with the Playwright API without having to go through any documentation or like a steep learning curve. Um, it generates the, the scaffold that's required for a Playwright test. And we can jump into the browser window here to essentially make actions uh, or do actions that we expect to do in, in our test. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually navigate to our to-do website. Uh, when I do that, uh, uh, Playwright code gen generates the code for that. So it says page.go to, uh, and it goes to this particular uh, URL. Um, now, when I have this URL, I can actually play with it in the browser window. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to click on this particular input field um, and Playwright shows me a selector for that particular input field. Let's try clicking this one. When I click this field, Playwright generates you know, the page.click uh, with this particular selector. Uh, and it picks you know, a user-facing selector. Uh, you know, this is not an implementation detail. It's something that the users are actually seeing and, and that makes the selector choice more reliable. Notice also that page.click does not actually require you know, any timeouts or sleep conditions. Uh, that is because page.click and every other action in Playwright uh, automatically waits for the right conditions. So page.click will automatically wait for this particular element to be visible, to stop animating, and to start receiving click events. Uh, that makes your tests a lot easier to write and maintain over time. Let's go back to the browser window and, and add a few more steps to our test. So I want to create a to-do uh, called write a test. Um, and you know, I've created the, uh, or CodeGen has created you know, the, the code snippet for that, which fills this, the, the 
the input field and then presses enter. And then I'm going to uh, check this checkbox uh, and click on the clear completed button. Uh, what we have here is our first test. Um, it basically tests for our, you know, our P0 scenario, which is add a to-do and then complete that to-do. Uh, and I'm just going to click on the copy button here uh, to bring it to my editor. So let's close these windows and uh, come back here. So in my editor, I'm now going to create a new file. Let's call it E2E because this is an end-to-end -end test. Uh, and I'm going to create uh, a file called todo.spec.ts, which is where we're going to save our, our test. I could have also chosen JS here uh, if I wanted a JavaScript file, but because Playwright comes with TypeScript out of the box and I like TypeScript, I'm just going to use uh, TS. I've pasted this file, uh, the, um, the test that we just created. Now, because this is TypeScript, I can actually use you know, ex6 import instead of you know, the require block. And I'm just going to switch to that. Uh, and you know, I also have type support for you know, the elements that Playwright uh, is bringing together for us here. Um, the first element that Playwright is bringing us uh, or injecting in this particular test is actually an empty web page. Uh, and you know, with TypeScript support, I can actually hover over my actions and go through the docs for those actions, go through other options that you know, my, my, I might want to consider using uh, you know, as I write more tests. Um, because this is code, I can you know, play around with it. I can convert this into a function, you know, change the text that I want to write or any other edit that might be required for the test. Uh, for now, I'm just going to stick with what we have uh, and turn over to the, the terminal so that we can actually run this test. So to run this test locally, I'm going to again use the playwright CLI tool uh, and use the test command. The test command expects the, the location or the directory name for the tests, which in this case is E2E. Once I do that, Playwright will spin up uh, a, a browser worker and it'll run the test for me and it says it passed uh, the test in Chromium. Uh, we didn't see a UI for this because the test was actually getting executed in a headless manner. To see the UI, we can pass the head flag, which will actually bring up the browser window, uh, navigate to that website and quickly run through the actions that we put together. This was again in Chromium, and I can specify a different browser if I wanted to, let's say, run it in Firefox. Let's try doing that now. So it spins up Firefox, does the exact same thing. Uh, and finally, I can also do this inside WebKit uh, to show you the three different browsers that we have uh, um, uh, available inside, inside Playwright. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to set up Playwright. We've been able to create a simple test, and we've been able to run it locally. Now let's take it a step further and actually deploy it to our CI CD environment. To do that, I'm going to actually open our GitHub Actions workflow, which was created when I set up uh, this Azure Static Web Apps uh, deployment. So when I did that, uh, Azure Static Web Apps put together a, a job that runs on GitHub Actions, which builds and deploys uh, my application, and it runs every time I uh, make this happen or make make an event on GitHub. For example, I push a new new version of my application. It does a bunch of actions, so it checks out my code and it builds and deploys uh, the website on Azure Static Web Apps. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually run my tests on this deployed website so that I can verify uh, that the tests have uh, uh, or the application is fulfilling our test criteria. To do that, I'm going to actually add these uh, uh, this brief snippet here uh, to the same YML. So what we've done here is, is exactly similar to what we did locally, right? We're going to install browsers to start with. Uh, CI CD agents don't come with browsers installed, but Playwright can install them for us. Uh, we're also going to install system dependencies. Um, you know, CI CD agents sometimes do, are not equipped with the system dependencies required to, in, to run and, and launch a browser. Uh, and you know, Playwright has a helper CLI command that, that essentially sets that up. And once I've done that, I can actually get started with running my tests. So I'll start with Chromium uh, and then Firefox and then WebKit. And th with these three commands, I've actually tested my application inside these three browsers. Uh, I can commit this and push it to GitHub uh, and this will trigger the, the run. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm actually going to switch to uh, a run that I uh, recently ran this morning, uh, which actually you know, does the exact same thing on Actions. So let's zoom into this particular uh, build. So what it did was you know, it installed the browsers. We can actually zoom into this and see Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit were installed. And then it ran the test. Uh, you know, it ran it on Chromium, uh, it ran it on Firefox, and it ran it on WebKit, uh, and all of those tests passed. So we got, we, you know, in, this, in, this, uh, you know, in this demo, we actually went through from 
uh, installing Playwright, setting up Playwright in our NPM project and installing the three browsers. We then switched over to authoring the test uh, and we used CodeGen to get started. Uh, you know, because that's code, we can always play with the API and, and you know, make changes as, as we require, uh, depending on our testing criteria. And we used APIs that had auto wait conditions in them. So we didn't have to worry about, you know, sleeping or timeouts or additional sort of wait conditions that often cause a lot of flakiness in automated end-to-end -end testing. Uh, and then we ran those tests locally. We ran the, the three browsers and saw the, the UI. Uh, and then finally pushed that to CI CD uh, and ran that on our GitHub Actions workflow. Um, in the future, we could have also uploaded artifacts. You know, we could have uploaded artifacts for you know a screenshot or a video that could have been taken in case the test failed, so that we could actually debug those uh, those cases. Um, that brings us to the end of the, the the talk. You know, I want to leave you with a few helpful links uh, to to get started and learn more about Playwright. Uh, our website and documentation is at playwright.dev. Uh, you can go through our getting started guides and see more on you know, debugging tooling, uh, um, you know, and network intersection and other sort of capabilities. Uh, you can also check us out on GitHub uh, on the Microsoft slash Playwright repository and join our Slack community. We have thousands of developers who are, who are on Slack, who are interacting with each other, learning about best practices from each other and also interacting with the team. Um, with that, uh, um, you know, I, I come to the end of the presentation. Um, I'd love to know if you have any questions or, you know, any feedback on, on this talk. Amazing. Thanks, y'all, for that wonderful presentation. Our chat has been very active during this. Um, I have a question for you. Tell me about Playwright and how it can help developers building SWA. Arjun, you want to yeah, take um, yeah, Go for it. For sure, yeah. So, um, you know, testing is, a, is, a, is in some ways a superpower to have. Um, you know, if you have a great end-to-end -end tests configured on your application, you can actually move at a much faster pace uh, and you know uh, shift with a lot more confidence, right? Um, and so, you know, if you're building a static web app or any other web application, for for it, for uh, you know, um, it could be any any web application, anything that runs in a browser. Um, once you've gotten to a point where your key scenarios are built out, you can actually encode them as code and then make sure that they never regress. Make sure that your your application is always fulfilling its its basic business requirements. Um, and that makes you ship faster. Uh, that's really the premise that we're, you know, we're shooting for. And we've seen multiple teams, you know, uh, 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 speed up their engineering uh, process because of reliable automated end-to-end -end testing with Playwright. All right, I have a question here. Well, first of all, we have someone in the chat. Uh, Isaac is saying, Playwright is a total game changer for web devs out there. I couldn't agree more. Playwright, all the things. Uh, we have a question here that says, um, my question is, what's the difference between Playwright versus Selenium IDE? Yeah, um, Selenium IDE is an amazing tool to actually get started with You know, Selenium. Um, you, know, you can use the Selenium IDE tool to record user actions and generate Selenium code. Uh, and you know we've learned and and you know found inspiration in that uh, you know when we built out the code gen feature for Playwright. Uh, uh, I think one of the key features that we learned from users while thinking about this this uh, feature was that users uh, and developers uh, were looking for code. You know they were looking for code as an output so that they could actually put it inside inside their Git repositories. You know have code reviews on it. Uh, and so that's been one particular feature that we focused on while building you know Playwright code gen. We've got a great question here from David Smith. Is there a way to record the browser as a video while the test runs in head dash dash headed mode? Um, that might be an easy way to automate scripted demos, et cetera. That's a great idea. And you know, it was one of our one of our most popular feature requests early on uh, because users actually wanted to see videos of you know executions that were even happening on CI CD. Um, you know, you have a headless execution, you don't know what's going on, but if you could actually get a video. Uh, you can investigate that failure, and uh, I think with 1.2, so it's been a few months. You know, it's it's uh, it's out there, and you can actually check it out. I would recommend going to our website and just searching for video, and you'll you'll find it there. Amazing! And again, we're always taking your feedback and requests, and make sure to let us know in the chat. Reach out and give us all your give us all your feature requests. Let us know. Give us your questions. Any parting words about Playwright before we wrap up this session, y'all? Uh, I was just going to say thanks for all the great comments and, and the interaction and definitely grab those links and, and go check it out. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Wow, y'all, we, we covered a lot of content today. I can't believe this is the end. A couple resources to, to send along your way as we wrap things up here. First of all, if we have any students in the chat, uh, we have this handy dandy link, aka.ms slash SWA students. You can sign up for an Azure account without a credit card with a bunch of free resources to get you started. So for our students out there, definitely check that out. Uh, and also a reminder that all of these sessions, if you're just tuning in and thinking, oh gosh, I missed it, don't worry, we've got you covered, aka.ms slash SWAConf on demand. We will have all of the videos from today's live session posted there over the next couple days. Um, quick little housekeeping uh, notes here. Uh, so the fun doesn't stop here, y'all. Um, the, now that Azure Stat Static Web Apps are out of preview and generally available on Azure, there's so much more to talk about. Make sure that tomorrow you join Brian Benz and Burke Holland on the launch space um, tomorrow, July 1st at 11 p.m. Pacific time. And they'll be talking about recent developments and share new features that are part of this GA release. Um, and the session recordings will be available very, very soon. I'm so excited to learn about all of the awesome static web app things that we are going, uh, that you're going to be building now that you've learned all of this great information. Um, we do have a couple little things here. Um, just uh, housekeeping wise, um, make sure that you give us your feedback. We want to know how to make Azure Static Web Apps better, how to improve them. We want to know what features you want, what, what is missing. Um, tell us how we can improve. Reach out. We are built on feedback here. We are here to build tools that developers are wanting to use and excited to use, let us know how we can help you build the tools that you need to, to help others out there. We're very excited. All right, y'all. I'm Chloe Condon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, make sure you go to aka.ms slash SWAConf on demand for all of these talks after the fact. And we cannot wait to see the amazing things that you build with Azure Static Web Apps. From all of us here on the Azure Cloud Advocacy team and everyone who put this event together, we thank you for joining us live and make sure that you Respond to our polls and chat along with the community in the chat on Learn TV. Have a great day, y'all.